this feature video, we're going to look at releasing queue stacks with complex times. This is a new feature added from Magic Q V1942 onwards. Let's take a look at how this works and how to use this. So first off, I'm going to, going to just give myself two empty playbacks. I'm going to grab my spots and I'm going to put them in green. And I'm going to record that onto playback 10. I'm going to clear the programmer and just uh, name that spots green. And we can see that playback works exactly as that. I'm now going to grab my spots again and locate them to put everything in the programmer. And I'm going to set them to be red. I'm now going to record that as a cue on playback 9. And I'm going to label that up so I know what it is. Spots red. And you'll see normally what happens when I activate the playback, the spots indeed turn red there. And when I release it, they go back to green because playback 10 is still active and is telling my spots to be green. So as I bring the fader up, they get red. As I release it, they're going back to the playback that's active that's telling the spots to be green. What we've now added is the way a way of releasing with complex times. So the way you do that is to record a second cue or an end cue on that playback. So the last cue in the stack is what we're looking for uh, and add the release timing to the attributes you want to use in that cue. We're not going to actually output any of this information. So I'm going to grab my spots and I'm going to set the color of them to be blue with a complex time. So I'm going to say, OK, five star plus blue, which is a out to in apply. And I'm going to record that as a second queue on playback nine. Now, of course, if I go into the queue stack and set that as queue timing, uh, right now what I've done is indeed recorded the second queue with that timing in. But what I want to do is use the timing of the last queue. We always look at the last queue in the stack to do the releasing of the attribute in the timing. It's not actually going to output that blue at all in a moment. So if I go into my queue stack options and go to activate release, you have a new option in here which says uh, release uh, now allows me to uh, use the timing uh, for my release. Um, so if I go in and set um, release uses last step times to yes. Now, if I release the playback, you'll see it will use that timing to go back. But of course, it's just gone from blue to green. What I'm interested in is when I activate the playback, the spots go red. It's output in Q1. I'm in Q timing. I'm not going to hit go to go to the second queue. I'm just going to pull down the fader, which releases it, and it's now going to go back to green, because that's what it's being told to do by the other playback, but it's using the fade time that's in the last queue of that queue stack. So it doesn't matter if I decide to put another queue in the middle, so I could say, actually, okay, spots, uh, let's locate, let's go magenta, and let's record that as a queue uh, 1.5 there. So my queue stack here has now got the spots in red, magenta, and blue. Uh, I could go into that queue stack, I could go to Q2, which is magenta, and then I could release it, and it will always look at the timing that's on the last queue and use that to go back to wherever I'm releasing to. So because, again, playback 10 is still active, telling it to go green, it will go back over that time, the last time in the queue stack, to where they need to be. And this works for any attributes. Again, you have to record the timing into the queue. So in my case, I've only put a release of color with that complex uh, release in there, into that queue, but I could do the same with position. Okay, if I go from uh, this down position here, um, I could put in my last queue a three second offset fade left to right uh, for position. And if I change the position, it would then, of course, release with that time as well. So that's releasing with complex time, a new feature available in Magic Queue V1942 onwards.